What's up guys, Hobbo88 here and welcome to The Art of Rally. It's a new game released by Fun Selector, the people behind Absolute Drift, and it's just released here in September 2020 and is a game that's getting quite a lot of attention and a lot of very positive feedback. Uh, it's a rally game essentially where you race uh, in the golden era of rallying, you drive iconic cars from through the 60s through to Group B on challenging environments inspired from different countries and locations around the world. This particular game struck my interest because of what it appears to be, which is something different to anything else that I've ever seen before. So in this video, we're going to go through, sit down and have a look at what the game actually is and give some impressions on what I think about it based on my first hour or so with the game. I'm going to kick things off straight away with the career mode. So here we go. Uh, in Rally, you race on multiple sections of road called Stages. The driver with the best total time on all the stages is the winner. Career mode follows Rally history from 1967 to 1996 with one season each year. That's cool. Each season has randomly generated rallies, so it will be new each time. If you finish a season with at least one restart remaining, you'll unlock a bonus livery. And to finish first, first, you must finish. Good luck, and never give up. Cool, all right, so you can see here we've got a series of groups, group two, group three, group four, group B, group S, and group A. Group B, I cannot wait till we get to group B, but we'll start things off with this. Group two, as rally was growing in popularity, regulations were needed to better organize the events and enhance the competition. The biggest rally events of the time were united in a single championship, attracting manufacturers to display their cars, drivers to race, and crowds to watch. So 1967, AI difficulty normal, damage level default, I'm going to leave that. Uh, the cars that we can pick from are as follows. we got the Escort and the Mini, which are the two that we can pick to start with. Uh, the Esky inline for 110 horsepower, naturally aspirated, four speed rear wheel drive. Um, originally designed to fit more grocery bags than the competition, it was not meant to be a bet some bribes and an engine designed by the parent company's f1 team made this common car into a legacy that traversed decades and sold millions building a strong reputation on both asphalt and dirt so this is built on the ford escort obviously and this is the mini uh it's an inline 490 horsepower a naturally aspirated four wheel four speed front wheel drive as opposed to rear wheel drive a diminutive compact which was made to go through the tight spaces of British cities. The same form factor made it into a rally classic and you could still park at the pub. Who needs a raw power when you can go full throttle through hairpins? <laughs> a good point. I'm a real wheel drive dude. I'm not going to run in the, the Mini unless I have to. We're going to race here in the Escort. And here's our liveries that we can pick from. That's cool. It's like a golf livery without uh, any paints. Obviously it's all stylized you guys and fairly basic. This is a classic Escort looking livery though. We'll go with that. Let's go ahead and pick it 1967 norway rally is where we're starting let's get this underway stage one of two norway i'm not going to try and pronounce that name snow 6.7 miles let's begin the stage and let's just wing it let's see what happens i have got this set up as automatic not manual Because when we're playing on a gamepad, as we are here, I'm a sucker for automatic. I, my brain doesn't calculate manual transmissions very well. Oh, so the snow banks are trouble. As you'd expect, they slow you right down. So far, so good. Bit of a drift. Oh, what's with the blue jump? I wasn't expecting that. Might have got a bit of damage on that one. Oh! A cut track, perhaps. There you go. Can't go around too many of the bollards without getting in trouble. I don't know if you guys caught a glimpse of that or not. The uh, little campsite with the smoke and the fire coming off of... Uh, that was really cool. This looks like a big hill with a jump. Oh! Oh! 
Oh, we perhaps should have slowed down for the jump. <laughs> That's interesting how it shows you through the trees. I was wondering how it would manage that sort of stuff, actually. Oh, this is awesome. Look at this. Oh, watch out, people. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. That's really pretty. You guys probably can't barely even see it. Okay, we went around one bollard and that was okay. There's a progress marker on the left hand side there by the look of it, so we're about halfway through the stage. As far as uh, cameras go, they're all like this. It's just how far back you or overhead you want to be. I actually have it uh, zoomed in about as far as you can get it, so as close to a traditional chase cam as you can get. Oh, the landing! We crushed two bollards but didn't go around them. And the light coming through is so nice. Oh, we've spun out. Oh, that's a tree. We're looking at a, about a four minute stage. Oh my goodness, once you get the swapper on in the snow. How good is that? I love the crowd. That's so good. Hey, there's another fire. Oh! We tried to go through it. <laughs> oh, that was the end of the stage. It reset me after the finish. How good. Four minutes and 22 seconds. That was hopeless, but still the best that we've done. Leaderboard, 1,081, down 85%. We've still got five restarts. We'll just leave it for the minute because I don't know what exactly I'm meant to be doing. So we'll just see what happens. We've got another snow stage, 2.7 miles. I feel like the first one was 6 point something, so this might be a bit shorter. I might be wrong. How cool is it that the crowd's like... Obviously, it's all stylized, but that's very rally from this era. Oh, oh, oh. But I remember corners need to slow down for those. That's better. It's been a long time since I've done a uh, a racing game of any type with a gamepad. I'm not gonna lie. I was about to say, we're starting to get a hang of this, and then I'll drive straight off the track. Oh, thought we might have been able to go through the hay bale. Apparently we cannot.
Oh, uh oh, uh oh. The resets, they kill you. There's the finish coming up. Oh no, it's not. There it is. No, it's not. Just tricking again. We are close to it. There it is. <laughs> that wasn't very good. We'll continue. Oh, we're way in front. AI difficulty might be a little easy for us right there. I believe it's dynamic. I believe it adjusts based on your, uh, your skills, so it should hopefully get harder. Oh, we unlocked a new car, you guys. The Lom the La Montaigne inline 400 horsepower, naturally aspirated four wheel four speed rear wheel drive. A sleek and aerodynamic design coupled to a very light body and capable engine made one of the first entrants to the 200 km an hour club and is still revered to this day. Rumor has it that the shape came about after the design engineer accidentally sat on a baguette. I mean, it makes somewhat makes sense. Classic car though. We unlocked a bonus livery for the DAS 220 based on the BMW, obviously. All right, good start. Warning, no. Ah, oh, righto, we can choose the other one. That, I assume... Yeah, the, the, the notification up there is still the same. Uh, so I guess we need to choose a different car, because why wouldn't we? We'll, we'll, have, a go, we'll have a go in the Mini. Let's do it. Norway again. More snow. Here we go. For this corner. Jump. Uh oh. I'll learn my lesson about turning to the jumps when you land. Oh, oh. Just. Oh, rally. Oh, we got uh, Tarmac. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my goodness. Never been very good at Tarmac on rally games. We're about halfway through the stage. Oh, we're going again. The uh, sensitivity on the steering is quite abrupt. Oh my goodness, once it tops out, it just like is impossible to control. <laughs> oh, oh, we're trying to go for trees. This big looking jump over the hill. Oh, we just got airborne. I'm glad I didn't go any quicker. Oh, watch out, people. That's the end of that stage. That was pretty good. I feel good about that one. 436th. 
on the leaderboard. I like it. Here we go. Oh, look at the time of day. Beautiful. Low light conditions. The art style kind of reminds me of like Firewatch, if any of you guys ever played that. Not a racing game, obviously, but it's just got that sort of art. It feels like it's got that sort of art style. Oh, that was cool. Up on two wheels. Oh, oh, no, not in the drink. Oh, perfect. Here's the finish. I feel pretty good about that stage too. There you go, right near the front. Top 20% on the charts. We destroyed our competition in that one. We need to adjust that. But <clears throat> that's uh, the first two sections in the campaign mode or the career mode done. Um, what I actually want to do though now is back out to the main menu and have a look at some of the uh, single race stuff just to see... If we can check out some different cars. Oh, we unlocked the Bimmer. Uh, see if we can unlock some. Uh, I play with some of the different cars and tracks. Different. Uh... Oh, a new livery for the Escort too. Very nice. So that's now the first two done. You can see you can work your way through all the different things. But we're going to go back and uh, just go with. I might go with Time Attack. So Finland. Group three for the cars this time. So uh, the Esky V2. Il Nono 313. The Rotary 3. Ah, the Stratos. La Wedge. <laughs> uh, Il Cavallo 803. He's a Porsche. Das 119E. So this is really cool. We'll have a look at, uh, I mean, we've already done one with an Escort. Maybe we should have a look at this. Uh, what's this car? The, uh, uh, I'll be getting murdered by you guys in the comments. This is the Fiat, uh, the Fiat, is it? A, a Fiat of Bath, is that what they're called? You guys will be letting me know. Following the British and German trend of reasonably priced homologation rally cars, the Italians followed with the Nono 313. With fiberglass body panels and new suspension tech, it took home many a championship and was produced for more than 30 years. So, let's uh, let's have a go at this, 
and we'll work our way through the different classes. Check out all the cars, check out the different locations uh, for this preview video. So we're in Finland. That means super fast, big jumps, and gravel. It's definitely not as nimble. As you would expect. The cars actually feel very weighty. Um, like physics wise. I, I mean not that you would probably really consider this to be a sim racing title. As far as that goes. But it's actually got very nice physics. The cars feel really heavy. Oh how good is that? Sorry, people. Jump. I love the little campfires. It's a nice touch. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, how good is it? Oh, how good is it? Where's the track go? Oh, to the right. Here we go. And this looks like tarmac. And it is. That's... I mean, guys, that's... That was so much fun. That was so much fun. Oh, my God. I like that. All right, time attack. Let's have another go. Uh, Sardinia. Where's that? Gravel. Uh, so we'll have a look at the next group of cars. Morning, we'll go afternoon for this one. Uh, so mid 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 mountain engine. So this is the uh... oh yeah. So we're in like the nineteen eighties now. There's the Bimmer, the Volvo, the Turbo Brick, <laughs> the Ford Sierra. Some awesome cars. Awesome cars. We've got to go in the brick though, don't we? So, here we go. This car refuses to die is a phrase constantly associated to this fine Swedish metal turbo brick. It's cheap beyond the definition of reliable and fast on straights too. It didn't score outrageous wins, nor was it ever backed by its manufacturer, but it was popular among privateers. We've got to go in the brick. We've got to go in the Volvo. Let's see what this does. I'm not actually really sure about the uh, where this is meant to be. As far as the location goes, but it's gravel apparently. I will say, sounds are actually really good too. This actually feels even more uh, nimble than the last car, actually. Last car felt really heavy. The brake lights work. Seems like a strange thing to say about a game in 2020, but nice little touch. <laughs> the flames are good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The brake discs glow. Did you guys see that in the front wheel? Let's see if we can see that on a corner when we get to one up here. Well, we're not going to see it there. Uh-oh. 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 We're around. Did I just see some uh, goats or sheep or something in the grass? Look like sheep. I don't know why I said goats. Why would there be goats? There you go, the brake, lo brake rotors are glowing. 
Now I'm trying to look at the wheels on the car instead of uh, the track to see where it's going. That's incredible. Oh, that corner was way sharper than I expected it to be. <laughs> right at the end of the stage, too. What a shame. And there it is. The finish. Oh, my goodness. That was not a very good stage. We're a fair way down on that one. <laughs> Alright, next one. Japan. This will be all... Uh... Group B, Group S, Group A. Bands, tri-wheelers, trucks, logging. Are you serious? Group B, Sunset. So here's our Group B cars. The Quattro. Oh, there's both versions of the Quattro. The Lancia Delta, the Ford RS200. All the iconic cars are in here, you guys. I know none of them are actually branded. How's it? Dust Hammer. Dust Hammer 2. Oh, that's great. Il Gorilla. <laughs> the Cozzy. I love it how they uh, how they've named them. That's great. Um, what do we have? We, we do have access to everything. I mean, oh no we don't. I think we'd be mad to not do a video, uh, a race in this video in this car, but I feel like we should come back to it and do that last. Uh, I actually think the RS200 could be good. Let's have a go at that. We'll come back and do the quattro at the end of the video, you guys. Sunset. Look at the colors. That's incredible. I have to say, I really like what this game is doing because it's just different to anything else I've seen before. Oh my god, the turbo lag. It actually, it actually simulates turbo lag because it went nowhere at the green light. And then I felt like I was doing a thousand miles an hour by the time we got to the end of first gear. Can really see the brake rotors glowing on this one. Oh my god. Oh! My inputs with a uh, joystick are seriously average for tarmac. Oh, watch out, people! Once you get the death wiggles happening, you're in trouble. It'll be smoother. Because I don't really play on a controller very much. I'm far from smooth. Oh, how pretty. How pretty is the colour? Oh, that'll be a reset. <laughs> the handbrake. got the death wiggles up there big time
Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's cool. Little chicane. We survived. <laughs> we survived. Again, not very well, but we did. Alright. What do we got next? Norway. We've already done Norway. We don't need to do that again. Germany. And that's all. So. Rain, night, fog. We've got some more. Uh... The Group S. <clears throat> what is Group S? So. Group S is an alternate reality to what we have currently. So this is uh, where Group A, um, Group B was banned because it was too dangerous. This is an alternate reality where if Group B was never banned, this is what we might have now. That looks like it's uh, based off an Audi. Look at that. They kind of resemble the cars that they are meant to be based off. It's quite cool. We'll have a go in this, uh, shall we? There's the RS200 in 2020. Let's have a look at it. Tarmac rain. Why not? Oh, look at the puddles. Oh, you know they're going to be bad news. And we got lights because of the time of day. Is very German. Hay bales and chicanes on the track. Lots of 90 degree corners. Just understeer straight off. There's the tank. They've absolutely nailed the feel of a, a German rally, that's for sure. In such a stylistic way too, like... Sorry, crowd. I love the crowds, that's just brilliant. Oh, that's a proper shunt right there. The cars do genuinely feel like... The physics are really quite good. I mean, they feel heavy, but it's also drivable on a controller, like... That's a shunt. One of the first things I think about when I think about a... Like, a game that has simulation-type physics, I instantly think it'd be difficult to drive on a controller. And although I look like I suck, because I do, I think that's more so because of my inexperience with the controller, not necessarily the game. I don't think there's any better feeling than a four-wheel drift out of a corner like that. Whoops. There is not much grip in the wet. Yeah, I still insist on going really fast. Oh, there's the end of the end of the stage. So I mean take what you want from those sort of cars. It depends what you're into. But for me it's all about the uh no, we're gonna go back to Finland because why wouldn't we? A longer one. Night time. Group A. So, Lancia Delta, the Subaru Impreza, Toyota Celica, Mitsubishi Lancer, Ford Escort. How good. The Max Attack. <laughs> uh, the lift back for the Celica, the Impreza. We'd be mad not to use the Impreza. Look at the liveries. All plain except for the obvious. 
How to win rallies. Turbo flat four boxer engine plus four wheel drive. This version brought an aluminium engine block and featured a cutting edge active center differential. It brought home three constructors championships consecutively between 95 and 97, proving to be the consistent on all terrains. We're going to do it, you guys. Oh, we're going to do it. Night time. 3.7 miles in our Subaru. The sounds are very good. Oh, oh my goodness. So much grip. Oh, look at the lights. That's so awesome. Got a bit of fauna on the side of the track. Watch out. Oh my god, that sucked. This is the era of rallying that I grew up with. These were the cars that were iconic when I was a kid. Um, hit me up in the comments, guys. Let me know. I'd love to know. I'd be very interested, actually, to hear from you guys. What is your favorite rally car of all time? For me, this would be a contender, the Subaru, but the Group B cars were just amazing. Like, oh, incredible. Oh, a bit of a lag there. Um, the Integrale, I always grew up loving the Lancia Integrale, but I mean, the Quattro, it's probably right up there as one of my favorite cars too. I think it was a fire-breathing monster. Oh! Get a good shot of the brake, uh, the brake rotor glowing here at night time, though. Chunk. All right, we saved it. Watch out! Oh, we're a menace to society. Oh my goodness, I thought we lost a wheel. We're nearly at the end of the stage. There it is. Wow. All right, let's get back to the menu. What we're going to do is have a quick look at... Uh, let's go in here and have a look at the vans. Oh, my God. We're not doing it. We're not doing it in this video. Tri-wheelers. There's only one of those. The trucks. Oh, they're like the Dakar truck. It's the only one in there. Whoops. Logging. <laughs> oh man. I can't believe that. Alright. We're going to go back to finish this one off uh, and go custom rally. Finland, two stages, skilled for the difficulty this time. I don't. Oh, stage one. 
five miles, three. Perfect. Two and a half. That'll do nicely. And we're going to go ahead and head back to the Group B. Quattro. Two different liveries. Again. Both of these are pretty like iconic looking, but we'd be mad to do anything other than this. The Das Hummer 2.5 V2. And this will end the video, you guys. Here we go. Oh, oh! When you get it wrong a bit. Not messing around. Five second penalty. <laughs> oh! Accidentally hit the inside wall there. That was a bit silly. These cars, seriously. Fire breathing monsters, the amount of power that they have. Anyone who doesn't love Group B rally cars has got something wrong with them. No offense if that's you watching, <laughs> but I cannot understand how anyone could not love these. Oh man. Not very good, bottom 85%. All right, here we go, last stage. Oh, terrible start. So while I struggle my way through here, this last stage of the video, let's uh, let's quickly talk about the game. So, um, I mean, I love it. The name, everything about the, that you need to know about it is in the title. The Art of Rally. It's uh, an artistic game. I mean, visually, it's unlike anything I've ever seen from a racing game before. And it's doing something different. That's what I like about it. It's kind of like hard to compare this to other games or to try and figure out whereabouts it would sit in the genre of racing games. Because it's different to anything else out there that I've sort of seen because it combines an art style that almost makes it an experience as much as anything else. Aesthetically, it's stunning, really. It's not realistic in its graphics, but it doesn't need to be. It, the stylistic approach to it is perfect. Um, the audio, fantastic. I think the audio is great. I've got the music playing very lightly in the background. I don't even know if you guys can really hear it. Um, but visually it's fantastic, audio wise fantastic, gameplay wise and physics wise, that's what probably surprises me the most, I mean, you could tell by looking at it what it was going to be from its visual standpoint, but the physics and controls of the game are really, really good, they actually, the cars actually feel weighted and heavy and have almost simulation type physics, which is the thing I find hard to believe the most. 
Um, value for money, I don't know. The campaign or the career mode, I don't really know how big it is. So it's hard to say, but I mean, you know, take, take what you want from it. Um, this is a bit of a look through at all the content that's in the game. There's only, without the DLC, there's only, what, five, um, five different locations, and I'm not sure if there might have been more with the DLC or not, but there's a heap of different cars. Um, and enough variety in the stages, really, I would think, to keep you going for a while. Um, it's definitely not a full-blown racing game, but at the same time, it is an experience. That's the way I sort of explain it is it's an experience. It's different to anything else that I've ever played before. And it's it's really good, I think, anyway. Um, I'd love to get your feedback about it in the comments below, guys. Let me know what you think, if you enjoy the look of it, if you've actually played it, what your thoughts and experiences are with the game. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Hobbo88, twitch.tv forward slash Hobbo88 to tune into my live streams. And of course, don't forget to check out the Discord channel. The link is in the description below. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.